Welcome back to my channel Gold Cheaters. In this video, I will reveal my secret gold cheating strategy that helped me to generate consistent profits year after year. Whether you are a newbie cheater or a professional cheater, that strategy can work for anyone. And watch this video until the end, because at the end of this video, I will share important risk management tips. And this strategy will be divided into three main parts. First, we'll discuss the analysis. In the analysis section, I will teach you how to analyze gold chart properly and what to look for. The second part of this strategy is the trade execution. And in that section, we will discuss where exactly should be your entry point. And the last section is the risk and trade management. And there we'll discuss where should be your stop loss, where should be your targets, and how exactly to calculate the risk for your trades. So sit back, grab your coffee, and let's get started. Cheaters, if you want to learn how to trade gold, if you want to see how I trade gold live, and if you want to see how I apply my trading strategy live, I want to invite you to my trading academy. Inside, you will get the access to my daily live streams with live Q&As and live cheating. You will get my ebook and video course explaining my cheating strategy. For more info, check the link in the description below. It is facilitator.com slash private group or text me in one of the social networks. I will give you more details. The strategy that I am teaching you is price action multiple time frame analysis beast. And our first task will be to analyze the key levels. Our task will be to start from a daily time frame that will be the first time frame that we'll analyze. And on a daily time frame, our task will be to look for the key levels. And here an important note is that we will only look for the key levels that are based on swing highs and swing lows. And the key levels will be the single levels, not the zones, not the supply and demand zones. And we will look for the horizontal levels and the vertical levels. And by the vertical key levels, I mean the trend lines. So gold chart, daily time frame, and let me show you how to spot key levels properly. In order to spot the key levels based on the swing highs and swing lows, you should simply underline the impulse legs. You should just follow the price action and you should just underline the most important price action legs. So you can see how quickly we do that. Then the next step is to simply underline the recent swing lows and swing highs. So for example, here is the key level. That is the current high and it is a strong resistance. It lower over here, we have one more resistance and you can see that from that level, just recently bearish movement initiated. Mid lower over here, we have key support. Mid lower over here, we have one more support. Over here, we have this support and right here, we have the two supports. So here, following the price action, we have spotted the horizontal levels, but also occasionally the price respects the vertical levels, the trend lines. And for our strategy, we will consider only the trend lines that respected at least three times in the row in the past. So here, Analyzing the price action here on gold, we can spot just one single trend line that meets the criteria. If we draw the trend line from that swing low and analyze how the price reacts to that trend line, we can spot that one, two, three times in a row that trend line was respected in the past. So that is the valid trend line and that is a very important key level for us. And let me share with you a very important tip. As you can see, we have, for example, the swing high right here and we have neglected the key level based on that swing high. Why? Because even though uh, that resistance was important for the market participants in the past, you can see that then the price violated that key level to the upside and then to the downside. So when the key level is violated by the buyers and the sellers, that key level becomes invalid. Once you executed this structure analysis, do not forget to remove the impulse text from your charts. Remember that in trading, you should keep your charts clean. Also remember traders that there is no guarantee that the key levels that we spotted will be respected. And remember that occasionally the market violates the key levels. You can see that with this bearish candle, the market violated that horizontal support and that trend line. After the breakout, 
the support turns into resistance and the resistance turns into support. Always remember about that rule. The next step will be to wait for the test of one of the key levels. As we discussed, the key levels are the points from where we treat. So your task is to check where the market is currently treating and if the market is treating beyond the key level, we are patiently waiting for the test. So at the moment, you can see that gold violated two key levels and now it is treating beyond them. So let's wait for the test of one of the key levels. After the breakout of a trend line, the market retested that. And the test of a trend line is a very important signal for us. It is the signal that the market is on a key level, that it is the time for us to start multiple time frame analysis. So our next step, once we see the test of structure, is to analyze the reaction of the price to a key level on lower time frames. And what will be the time frames that we will apply for multiple time frame analysis? We will apply the hourly and 30 minutes time frames. And our task will be to analyze the price action on these time frames. On these time frames, we will monitor the intraday reaction of the price to a key level. Analyzing the hourly and 30 minutes charts, we should look for the signs of consolidation. We should look for the signs of weakness and indecision. And the best sign of indecision and consolidation is the formation of the range. So analyzing the hourly and 30 minutes, we will look for the horizontal ranges. These horizontal ranges are very important because within the horizontal ranges, the trading orders are accumulating, the volumes are accumulating, and the market participants decide whether to break a key level or to pull back from that. And when the market is trading within the range, the market participants are preparing. But the exact trigger for us of the strengths of the key level that we spotted on a daily will be the breakout of the range. And if we trade from a key daily resistance, of course, we will look for the bearish breakout of the range. Yes, because the bearish violation of the support of the range will confirm to us that sellers are dominating and that selling pressure is stronger than the buying pressure. And if we are trading from a key daily support, of course, in contrast, we will look for a bullish breakout of the resistance of the range. That will be the important sign of the strengths of the buyers. And that will be the exact confirmation that we will look for. And what are the characteristics of the ranges that we look for. The point is, traders, that they can have very different shapes. Sometimes you will see a lot of equal highs and equal lows. Sometimes within the range, you will see the low highs and high lows. But the point is that you should strictly have one single strong resistance that the price respects and one single strong support that the price respects. And within that range, anything can happen. Yes, and we knew, never knew in advance how the market will treat within the range. But one important thing is there's one single resistance that the price keeps respecting and one single support. And while the market respects this one single resistance and this one single support, the market keeps trading in sideways. Do you remember the trend line that we discussed at the beginning of this video? If we analyze how the market reacted to that trend line in the past, we can spot that once that trend line was reached, the market started to consolidate. And you can see that the market started to trade within the range. Even though beers were pushing the price heavily, once the trend line was reached, the market stopped falling and we started to consolidate. And you can see that even though the price action within that range was quite chaotic, the price perfectly respected one single horizontal resistance and one single horizontal support. And of course, the formation of the range by itself was not the signal. But the signal was the breakout 
of the ranges resistance to the upside because the breakout of the re ranges resistance is the sign of the strength of the buyers. Realize that from the resistance of the range, sellers are selling. The selling orders are there. And the breakout of that is the indication that buyers are stronger than the sellers. The range by itself is the sign of the equilibrium. Yes, the buying and the selling pressure are equal, but the breakout, yes, is the indication of the sign of the strengths. So that is exactly what we look for. Now we return back to the key levels that we spotted at the beginning of this video. And I want to remind you that we spotted the breakout of the trend line and then the market retested that. So let's analyze hourly and 30 minutes time frames and let's check the reaction and let's look for the range. And first we check the hourly time frame. On an hourly time frame we analyze the price action and here we don't see the range. You can see that the price simply tested the trend line and here we have some random candles. So let's open the 30 minutes chart. On the 30 minutes time frame, the picture is completely different. If we analyze the price action here, we can spot that here the price respects that horizontal resistance and we see multiple equal highs and the price perfectly respects that. And at the same time, over here, we have a wide and strong support and you can see that the price is perfectly treating between these two minor structures, between that minor resistance and that support. So that is also the example of the range. And as we discussed, within the range, the trading volumes are accumulating. And the confirmation of the strengths of our trend line is, of course, the breakout, the violation of the support of the range to the deal side. And take a look what happened next. After the consolidation, the price violated the support of the range to the deal side. That was our confirmation. That was the indication that sellers are dominating and that the selling pressure is stronger than the buying one. And that breakout was the trigger for other sellers to join. And you can see that then we retested the broken support of the range and we saw a strong bearish move. So that is the analysis part of our trading strategy. First, we analyze the key levels on a daily time frame. We analyze the swing highs and swing lows and based on them, we spotted horizontal and vertical key levels. The next step was to wait for the test of one of the key levels. Once the market reached the key level, we started analyzing the lower time frames. We were analyzing the hourly and 30 minutes time frames. And on this time frames, our task was to look for the range. Our task was to look for the consolidation, to look for the horizontal range, and then wait for a breakout. That is the part of the analysis. And once you spotted the breakout of the range, then starts the trade execution stage. Stage number two, trade execution. And when we execute the trade, we should know the exact entry point, we should know the stop loss level, and we should know the tick profit level. And first, we will discuss the theory. I will show you the logic behind the stop loss target and entry selection. And then we will check the real market examples. First of all, about the entry level. As you remember, our main signal is the breakout of the range. And if the price breaks the resistance of the range, our entry will be the retest of a broken resistance of the range. If we treat the breakout of the support of the range, then again, we will strictly treat on a retest and our entry will be the retest of a broken support of the range. Now about the stop loss placement. Remember that the stop loss level is the point where you become wrong in your predictions. And treating the breakout of the resistance of the range, where will we become wrong? We will become wrong if the price drops and violates the lower boundary of the range. So our stop loss, our safe stop loss will lie strictly 
believe we lose all of the range. And if we treat the breakout of the support of the range, our stop loss will lie above the upper boundary of the range. How about tick profit level? We will treat with one single tick profit and our tick profit will be based on the closest strong structure. If we buy the market, we will look for the closest strong resistance. And if we sell the market, we will look for the closest strong support. By the closest strong structure, we will mean the closest four hour structure, the closest structure that we see on the four hour. So in this theoretical examples, our target for that trade will be that structure right here, because it is the closest structure. And for that short trade, our tick profit will be that structure, because it is the closest strong support. Take a look at that horizontal range on an hourly time frame. That is the perfect example of the consolidation. And you can see that the price perfectly violated the support of the range he did on side. So trading that range, your entry should be on a retest of a broken support of the range. But you can see that the support of the range right here is the area. So which level exactly? The exact level is simply the lowest point, the lowest wick within that support. So that will be your exact entry point, the point from where you will sell. How about the stop loss? Stop loss will lie above the highs of the range. Yes, so you simply find the highest point of the range and you set your stop loss above that. How about the target? As we discussed, your target is the closest horizontal for our support. So we open a four hour time frame and on a four hour time frame, we look for the closest horizontal support. Over here is our closest structure. So our tick profit will be based on that. So returning back to the hourly time frame, we will sell the market from here, stop loss lying above the highs and here will be your Tick profit. That is how you prepare your trade. You can see that after the breakout of the support of the range, the market retested that the trade went active and then the market dropped quickly, reaching the tick profit. And do you remember the range that we spotted on 30 minutes short when the market was retesting the broken trend line? Following this strategy, your trade entry for treating that range was the retest of a broken support of the range. Yes, the lowest point of that white support. That would be your exact entry point. Stop loss would lie above the highs of the range. And how about the tick profit? Do we see any four hour structure? right here. Let's open the four hour structure and four hour time frame and check where is our closest strong support. Our closest four hour support is right here. Yes, we look left at structure and we simply look for the closest strong support. And here it goes. So returning back to the 30 minutes short, let's project our potential risk to reward for that trade. Here is our range. Yes, shorting the market. From here, our stop loss would have been over here and our take profit would have been over here. So you can see how perfectly that setup would play out. The last stage, the risk management. And the main rule of risk management for that trading strategy is that you should not apply the fixed lot. Instead, you should calculate the lot size for all your treats. And I want you to risk 1% of your trading account per treat. So you should measure the PIP value of your stop loss, the PEP distance from the entry point to stop loss, and then apply the position size calculator and make sure that your risk is 1% of your trading deposit. One more very important note is about the risk to reward ratio, because as you remember, our target is structure based. We choose our target based on the closest for our structure. And if you look at these two ranges, so here we have the range that was broken to the tune side and the goal was the closest for our structure support. And here we have another range and you can see that that range was broken to the upside and planning the target 
you can see that the target is again based on that four hour structure that now turned into a very strong resistance. And measuring risk to reward for that trade, we can see that the risk to reward for that trade is negative. It means that it is below one. Remember one very important rule. When you are planning the trade, make sure that your risk to reward ratio is positive, meaning that the reward should strictly be bigger than the risk. That is the rule. And if the projected risk to reward is negative, below one, do not take the trade. Do not treat the trading setup. So here goes the process. You start with the daily time frame and on a daily time frame, you execute the structure analysis. You analyze the swing highs and swing lows, and based on them, you draw the horizontal key levels and the trend lines. The next step will be to let the price reach one of the key levels. Your task will be to wait for the test of one of the key levels. After that, once one of the key levels is reached, you start analyzing lower time frames. You analyze one hour time frame and 30 minutes short. And on this time frames, you are looking for the range, the horizontal range. And then if you are trading from key daily support, you are looking for a bullish breakout of the resistance of the range as your confirmation. And if you're trading from the resistance, from the key daily resistance, you're waiting for the breakout of the support of the range. That is your trigger. After that, you set your entry on a retest of a broken boundary of the range stop loss lying above the resistance of the range if you short and below the low of the range if you buy. Your take profit is the closest four hour structure. You strictly risk 1% of your cheating deposit and your risk to reward should be positive. Being applied properly, that strategy will generate 65% win rate. You just let me know in the comment section if you want me to record more gold trading strategies for you. Also, you just remember that if you want to see how we apply the trading strategy live, if you want to learn gold trading, you can join my trading academy. The link in the description below. Also, you just please like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching.